बुक वन कैंट ऑफ फायर द योगा ऑफ द किंग द योगा ऑफ द स्पिरिट्स फ्रीडम एंड ग्रेटनेस दिस नॉलेज फर्स्ट ही हैड ऑफ टाइम बॉर्न मैन एडमिटेड through a curtain of bright mind that hangs between our thoughts and absolute sight he found the occult cave the mystic door near to the well of vision in the soul and entered where the wings of glory brood in the silent space where all is forever known indifferent to doubt and to belief avid of the naked real single shock he shore the cord of mind that ties the earth heart and cast away the yoke of matter's law the body's rules bound not the spirit's powers when life had stopped its beats death broke not in he dared to live when breath and thought were still thus could he step into that magic place which few can even glimpse with hurried glance lifted for a moment from mind's labored works and the poverty of nature's earthly sight all that the gods have learned is their self known there in a hidden chamber closed and mute are kept the record graphs of the cosmic scribe and there the tables of the sacred law there is the book of beings index page the text and glossary of the vedic truth are there the rhythms and meters of the stars significant of the movements of our fate the symbol powers of number and of form and the secret code of the history of the world and nature's correspondence with the soul are written in the mystic heart of life in the glow of the spirit's room of memories he could recover the luminous marginal notes dotting with light the crabbed ambiguous scroll rescue the preamble and the saving clause of the dark agreement by which all is ruled that rises from material nature sleep to clothe the everlasting in new shapes he could reread now and interpret new its strange symbol letters scattered abstruse signs resolve its oracle and its paradox its riddling phrases and its blindfold terms the deep oxymoron of its truths repliques and recognize as a just necessity its hard conditions for the mighty work nature's impossible herculean toil only her warlock wisecraft could enforce its law of the opposition of the gods its list of inseparable contraries the dumb great mother in her cosmic trance exploiting for creation's joy and pain infinity sanction to the birth of form accepts indomitably to execute the will to know in an inconscient world the will to live under a reign of death the thirst for rapture in a heart of flesh 
and works out through the appearance of his soul by a miraculous birth in plasm and gas the mystery of God's covenant with the night. Once more was heard in the still cosmic mind the Eternal's promise to his laboring force, inducing the world passion to begin the cry of birth into mortality and the opening verse of the tragedy of time. Out of the depths the world's buried secret rose. He read the original UK's kept back in the locked archives of the spirit script and saw the signature and fiery seal of wisdom on the dim power's hooded work who builds in ignorance the steps of light. A sleeping deity opened deathless eyes. He saw the unshaved thought in soulless forms, new matter pregnant with spiritual sense, mind dare the study of the unknowable, life its gestation of the golden child. In the light flooding thought's blank vacancy, interpreting the universe by soul signs, he read from within the text of the without. The riddle grew plain and lost its catch obscure. A larger luster lit the mighty page. A purpose mingled with the whims of time. A meaning met the stumbling pace of chance, and fate revealed a chain of seeing will. A conscious wideness filled the old dumb space. In the void he saw throne the omniscience supreme. A will, a hope immense, now seized his heart. And to discern the superhuman's form, he raised his eyes to unseen spiritual heights, aspiring to bring down a greater world. The glory he had glimpsed must be his home. A brighter, heavenlier sun must soon illume this dusk room with its dark internal stare, the infant soul in its small nursery school, mid objects meant for a lesson hardly learned, outgrow its early grammar of intellect and its imitation of earth nature's art, its earthly dialect to God language change. In living symbols, study reality and learn the logic of the infinite. The ideal must be nature's common truth. The body illumined with the indwelling God. The heart and mind feel one with all that is. A conscious soul live in a conscious world. As through a mist a sovereign peak is seen, the greatness of the eternal spirit appeared. Exiled in a fragmented universe, amid half semblances of diviner things, these now could serve no more his regal turn. The immortal's pride refused the doom to live, a miser of the scanty bargain made between our littleness and bounded hopes and the compassionate infinitudes. His height repelled the lowness of earth's state, a wideness discontented with its frame, resiled from poor Ascent to nature's terms, 
the harsh contract spurn and the diminished lease. Only beginnings are accomplished here. Our basis matter seems alone complete, an absolute machine without a soul. Or all seems a misfit of half ideas, or we saddle with the vice of earthly form, a hurried, imperfect glimpse of heavenly things, guesses and travesties of celestial types. Here chaos sorts itself into a world, a brief formation drifting in the void. Apings of knowledge, unfinished arcs of power, flamings of beauty into earthly shapes, love's broken reflexes of unity, swim fragment mirrorings of a floating sun, a packed assemblage of crude tentative lives are pieced into a tessellated whole. There is no perfect answer to our hopes. There are blind, voiceless doors that have no key. Thought climbs in vain and brings a borrowed light. Sheeted by counterfeits, sold to us in life's mart, our hearts clutch at a forfeited heavenly bliss. There is provender for the mind's satiety. There are thrills of the flesh, but not the soul's desire. Here even the highest rapture time can give is a mimicry of ungrasped beatitudes, a mutilated statue of ecstasy, a wounded happiness that cannot live a brief felicity of mind or sense thrown by the world power to her body slave or a simulacrum of enforced delight in the seraglios of ignorance. For all we have acquired soon loses worth an old disvalued credit in time's bank, imperfections check drawn on the inconscient. In inconsequence dogs every effort made, and chaos waits on every cosmos formed. In each success a seed of failure lurks. He saw the doubtfulness of all things here, the incertitude of man's proud, confident thought the truncheons of the achievements of his force. A thinking being in an unthinking world, an island in the sea of the unknown, he is a smallness trying to be great, an animal with some instincts of a god. His life a story too common to be told, his deeds a number summing up to naught, his consciousness a torch lit to be quenched, his hope a star above a cradle and grave. And yet a greater destiny may be his, for the eternal spirit is his truth. He can recreate himself and all around and fashion new the world in which he lives. He, ignorant, is the knower beyond time. He is the self above nature, above fate. His soul retired from all that he had done. Hushed was the futile din of human toil, forsaken wheeled the circle of the days. In distance sank the crowded tramp of life. The silence was his sole companion left. Impassive he lived 
immune from earthly hopes, a figure in the ineffable witness shrine, pacing the vast cathedral of his thoughts, under its arches dim with infinity and heavenward brooding of invisible wings. A call was on him from intangible heights, indifferent to the little outpost mind, he dwelt in the wideness of the Eternal's reign. His being now exceeded thinkable space, his boundless thought was neighbor to cosmic sight, a universal light was in his eyes, a golden influx flowed through heart and brain. A force came down into his mortal limbs, a current from eternal seas of bliss. He felt the invasion and the nameless joy. Aware of his occult, omnipotent source, allured by the omniscient ecstasy, a living center of the illimitable, widened to equate with the world's circumference, he turned to his immense spiritual fate. Abandoned on a canvas of torn air, a picture lost in far and fading streaks, the earth nature's summits sank below his feet. He climbed to meet the infinite more above. The immobile ocean silence saw him pass, an arrow leaping through eternity suddenly shot from the tense bow of time, a ray returning to its parent sun. Opponent of that glory of escape, the black inconscient swung its dragon tail, lashing a slumberous infinite by its force into the deep obscurities of form. Death lay beneath him like a gate of sleep. One pointed to the immaculate delight, questing for God as for a splendid prey. He mounted, burning like a cone of fire. To a few is given that godlike rare release. One among many thousands never touched, engrossed in the external world's design, is chosen by a secret witness eye and driven by a pointing hand of light across his soul's unmapped immensitudes. A pilgrim of the everlasting truth our measures cannot hold his measureless mind. He has turned from the voices of the narrow realm and left the little lane of human time. In the hushed precincts of a vaster plan, he treads the vestibules of the unseen or listens following a bodiless guide to a lonely cry in boundless vacancy. All the deep cosmic murmur falling still, he lives in the hush before the world was born, his soul left naked to the timeless one. Far from compulsion, of created things, thought and its shadowy idols disappear. The moles of form and person are undone. 
the ineffable whiteness knows him for its own, a lone forerunner of the Godward earth, among the symbols of yet unshaped things, watched by closed eyes, mute faces of the unborn, he journeys to meet the incommunicable, hearing the echo of his single steps in the eternal courts of solitude. A nameless marvel fills the motionless hours. His spirit mingles with eternity's heart and bears the silence of the infinite. In a divine retreat from mortal thought, in a prodigious gesture of soul sight, his being towered into pathless heights, naked of its vesture of humanity. As thus it rose to meet him bare and pure, a strong descent leaped down, a might, a flame, a beauty half visible with deathless eyes, a violent ecstasy, a sweetness dire, enveloped him with its stupendous limbs and penetrated nerve and heart and brain that thrilled and fainted with the epiphany. His nature shuddered in the unknown's grasp. In a moment shorter than death, longer than time, by a power more ruthless than love, happier than heaven, taken sovereignly into eternal arms, hailed and coerced by a stark absolute bliss in a whirlwind circuit of delight and force, hurried into unimaginable depths, upborne into immeasurable heights, it was torn out from its mortality and underwent a new and bornless change. An omniscient knowing, without sight or thought, an indecipherable omnipotence, a mystic form that could contain the world, yet make one human breast its passionate shrine drew him out of his seeking loneliness into the magnitude of God's embrace. As when a timeless eye annuls the hours, abolishing the agent and the act, so now his spirit shone out wide, blank, pure. His wakened mind became an empty slate on which the universal and soul could write. All that represses our fallen consciousness was taken from him like a forgotten load, a fire that seemed the body of a god consumed the limiting figures of the past and made large room for a new self to live. Eternity's contact broke the moulds of sense. A greater force than the earthly held his limbs, huge workings bared his undiscovered sheaths, strange energies wrought and screened Tremendous hands unwound the triple cord of mind and freed the heavenly wideness of a godhead's gaze. As through a dress the wearer's shape is seen, there reached through forms to the hidden absolute a cosmic feeling 
and transcendent sight. Increased and heightened were the instruments. Illusion lost her aggrandizing lens. As from a failing hand the measures fell, atomic looked the things that loomed so large. The little ego's ring could join no more. In the enormous spaces of the self, the body now seemed only a wandering shell. His mind, the many frescoed outer court of an imperishable inhabitant. His spirit breathed a superhuman air. The imprisoned deity rent its magic fence, as with a sound of thunder and of seas, vast barriers crashed around the huge escape. Immutably coeval with the world, circle and end of every hope and toil, inexorably drawn round thought and act, the fixed, immovable peripheries effaced themselves beneath the incarnate tread. The dire velamen and the bottomless script between which life and thought forever move, forbidden still to cross the dim dread bounds, the guardian darknesses, mute and formidable, empowered to circumscribe the wingless spirit in the boundaries of mind and ignorance, protecting no more a dual eternity, vanished, rescinding their enormous role. Once figure of creation's vain ellipse, the expanding zero lost its giant curve. The old adamantine vetoes stood no more. Overpowered were earth and nature's obsolete rule. The python coils of the restricting law could not restrain the swift arisen God. Abolished were the scripts of destiny. There was no small death-haunted creature more, no fragile form of being to preserve from an all-swallowing immensity the great hammer beats of a pent-up world heart burst open the narrow dams that keep us safe against the forces of the universe. The soul and cosmos faced as equal powers. A boundless being in a measureless time invaded nature with the infinite. He saw unpathed, unwalled his titan scope. All was uncovered to his sealless eye. The secret nature stripped of her defense, once in a dreaded half-light formidable, overtaken in her mighty privacy, lay bare to the burning splendor of his will. In shadowy chambers lit by a strange sun, an opening hardly to hid mystic keys, her perilous arcanes and hooded powers confessed the advent of a mastering mind and bore the compulsion of a time-born gaze. Incalculable in their wizard modes, immediate and invincible in the act, her secret strengths native to greater worlds, lifted above our needy, limited scope, the occult privilege of demigods and the sure power pattern of her cryptic signs, her diagrams 
of geometric force, her potencies of marvel fraught design, courted employment by an earth nursed might. A conscious nature's quick machinery, armed with a latent splendor of miracle, the prophet passion of a seeing mind, and the lightning bareness of a free soul force. All once impossible deemed could now become a natural limb of possibility, a new domain of normalcy supreme. An almighty occultist erects in space this seeming outward world which tricks the sense. He weaves his hidden threads of consciousness. He builds bodies for his shapeless energy. Out of the unformed and vacant vast he has made his sorcery of solid images, his magic of formative number and design, the fixed irrational links none can annul, this crisscross tangle of invisible law. His infallible rules, his covered processes, achieve unerringly an inexplicable creation where our error carves dead frames of knowledge for a living ignorance. In our mysteries, moods, divorced from the Maker's laws, she too as sovereignly creates her field, her will shaping the undetermined vast, making a finite of infinity. She too can make an order of her caprice, as if her rash, superb, wager to outweigh the veiled creator's cosmic secrecies. The rapid footsteps of her fantasy, amid whose falls wonders like flowers rise, are surer than reason, defter than device, and swifter than imagination's wings. All she new fashions by the thought and word, compels all substance by her wand of mind. Mind is a mediator divinity. Its powers can undo all nature's work. Mind can suspend or change Earth's concrete law, a franchise from Earth habits, drowsy seal, the leaden grip of matter it can break, indifferent to the angry stare of death, it can immortalize a moment's work, a simple fiat of its thinking force, the casual pressure of its slight ascent can liberate the energy dumb and pent within its chambers of mysterious trance. It makes the body sleep a puissant arm, hold still the breath, the beatings of the heart, while the unseen is found, the impossible done, communicates without means the unspoken thought. It moves events by its bare, silent will, acts at a distance without hands or feet. This giant ignorance, this dwarfish life, it can illumine with a prophet sight, invoke the bacchic rapture, the fury's goad, in our body arouse the demon or the god. Call in the omniscient and omnipotent. Awake a forgotten almightiness within. In its own plane, a shining emperor. Even in this rigid realm, mind can be king. The logic of its demigod idea 
in the leap of a transitional moment brings surprises of creation never achieved even by matter's strange unconscious skill all's miracle here and can by miracle change this is that secret nature's edge of might on the margin of great immaterial planes in kingdoms of an untrammeled glory of force where mind is master of the life and form and soul fulfills its thoughts by its own power she meditates upon mighty words and looks on the unseen links that join the parted spheres then to the initiate who observes her laws she brings the light of her mysterious realms here where he stands his feet on a prostrate world his mind no more cast into matter's mold over their bounds in spurts of splendid strength she carries their magician processes and the formulas of their stupendous speech till heaven and hell become purveyors to earth and the universe the slave of mortal will a mediatrix with veiled and nameless gods whose alien will touches our human life imitating the world magician's ways she invents for her self-bound free will its grooves and feigns for magic's freaks a binding call all worlds she makes the partners of her deeds accomplices of her mighty violence her daring leaps into the impossible from every source she has taken her cunning means she draws from the free love marriage of the planes elements for her creations to the force a wonder weft of knowledge incalculable a compendium of divine inventions feats she has combined to make the unreal true or liberate suppressed reality in her unhedged Circean wonderland, pell-mell she shepherds her occult mightinesses, her mnemonics of the craft of the infinite, jets of the screen, subliminal caprice, tags of the grammarai of inconscience, freedom of a sovereign truth without a law, thoughts that were born in the immortal's world, oracles that break out from behind the shrine warnings from the demonic inner voice and peeps and lightning leaps of prophecy and intimations to the inner ear abrupt interventions stark and absolute and the superconscious unaccountable acts have woven her balanced web of miracles and the weird technique of her tremendous art this bizarre kingdom passed into his charge as one resisting more the more she loves her great possessions and her power and lore she gave compelled with a reluctant joy herself she gave for rapture and for use absolved from aberrations in deep ways the ends she recovered for which she was made she turned against the evil she had helped her engine wrought her invisible means to slay her dangerous moods and arbitrary force she surrendered to the service of the soul and the control of a spiritual will a greater despot tamed her despotism 
assailed, surprised in the fortress of herself, conquered by her own unexpected king, fulfilled and ransomed by her servitude, she yielded in a vanquished ecstasy, her sealed hermetic wisdom forced from her, fragments of the mystery of omnipotence. A border sovereign is the occult force, a threshold guardian of the earth scenes beyond. She has canalized the outbreaks of the gods and cut through vistas of intuitive sight a long road of shimmering discoveries. The worlds of a marvelous unknown were near. Behind her, an ineffable presence stood. Her reign received their mystic influences, their lion forces crouched beneath her feet. The future sleeps unknown behind their doors. Abysms infernal gaped round the soul steps and called to its mounting vision peaks divine. An endless climb, an adventure of the idea, there tirelessly tempted the explorer mind, and countless voices visited the charmed ear. A million figures passed and were seen no more. This was a forefront of God's thousandfold house, beginnings of the half-screened invisible, a magic porch of entry glimmering, quivered in a penumbra of screened light, a court of the mystical traffic of the worlds, a balcony and miraculous facade. Above her lightened high immensities, all the unknown looked out from boundlessness. It lodged upon an edge of hourless time, gazing out of some everlasting now, its shadows gleaming with the birth of gods, its bodies signaling the bodiless, its foreheads glowing with the oversoul, its forms projected from the unknowable, its eyes dreaming of the ineffable, its faces staring into eternity. Life in him learned its huge subconscient rear. The little fronts unlocked to the unseen vasts. Her gulf stood nude. Her far transcendences flamed in transparencies of crowded light. A giant order was discovered here of which the tassel and extended fringe are the scant stuff of our material lives. This overt universe whose figures hide the secrets merged in superconscient light wrote clear the letters of its glowing code, a map of subtle signs surpassing thought was hung upon a wall of inmost mind, illumining the world's concrete images into significant symbols by its gloss. It offered to the intuitive exegete its reflex of the eternal mystery. Ascending and descending twixt life's poles, the serried kingdoms of the graded law plunged from the everlasting into time, then glad of a glory of multitudinous mind and rich with life's adventure and delight and packed with the beauty of matters, shapes and hues, climbed back from time into undying self up a golden ladder carrying the soul, tying 
with diamond threads the spirit's extremes. In this drop from consciousness to consciousness, each leaned on the occult in conscience power, the fountain of its needed ignorance, arc mason of the limits by which it lives. In this soar from consciousness to consciousness, each lifted tops to that from which it came, origin of all that it had ever been, and home of all that it could still become. An organ scale of the Eternal's acts, mounting to their climax in an endless calm, paces of the many visaged wonderful, predestined stadia of the evolving way, measures of the stature of the growing soul, they interpreted existence to itself and mediating twixt the heights and deeps, united the veiled married opposites and linked creation to the ineffable. A last high world was seen where all worlds meet in its summit gleam where night is not nor sleep the light began of the trinity supreme all there discovered what it seeks for here it freed the finite into boundlessness and rose into its own eternities the inconscient found its heart of consciousness, the idea and feeling, groping in ignorance, at last clutched passionately the body of truth, the music born in matter's silences, plucked nude out of the ineffable's fathomlessness, the meaning it had held but could not voice. The perfect rhythm now only sometimes dreamed an answer brought to the torn earth's hungry need, rending the night that had concealed the unknown, giving to her her lost forgotten soul. A grand solution closed the long impasse in which the heights of mortal effort end. A reconciling wisdom looked on life, it took the striving undertones of mind and took the confused refrain of human hopes and made of them a sweet and happy call. It lifted from an underground of pain the inarticulate murmur of our lives and found for it a sense illimitable. A mighty oneness, its perpetual theme, it caught the soul's faint, scattered utterances, read hardly twixt our lines of rigid thought, or mid this drowse and coma on matter's breast, heard like disjointed mutterings in sleep. It grouped the golden links that they had lost, and showed to them the divine unity, saving from the error of divided self the deep spiritual cry in all that is. All the great words that toiled to express the one were lifted into an absoluteness of light, an ever-burning revelation's fire and the immortality of the eternal voice. There was no quarrel more of truth with truth. The endless chapter of their differences retold in light by an omniscient scribe traveled through difference towards unity, mind's winding search lost every tinge of doubt, led to its end by an all-seeing speech that garbed the initial and original thought with the finality 
of an ultimate phrase. United were time's creative mood and tense to the style and syntax of identity. A paean swelled from the lost musing deeps. An anthem pealed to the triune ecstasies, a cry of the moments to the mortal's bliss. As if the strophes of a cosmic ode, a hierarchy of climbing harmonies, peopled with voices and with visages, aspired in a crescendo of the gods, from matter's abysses to the spirit speaks. Above were the immortals, changeless seats, white chambers of dalliance with eternity and the stupendous gates of the alone. Across the unfolding of the seas of self appeared the deathless countries of the one, a many-miracled consciousness unrolled, vast aim and process and unfettered norms, a larger nature's great familiar roads, a franchise from the net of earthly sense, calm continents of potency were glimpsed, homelands of beauty shut to human eyes, half seen at first through wonder's gleaming lids, surprised the vision with felicity. Sun bells of knowledge, moon bells of delight, stretched out in an ecstasy of widenesses beyond our indigent corporeal range. There he could enter, there a while abide. A voyager upon uncharted routes, fronting the viewless danger of the unknown. Adventuring across enormous realms, he broke into another space and time.